you are Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On this podcast, we break down everything prospects related for you five days a week, Monday to Friday. I'm Hattie Kalakesh, QMJHL scout for Elite Prospects with Sebastian High, USHL scout for Elite Prospects. And on today's show, we'll be breaking down teams 23 through 21 in our prospect pool rankings. We'll look at Pittsburgh uh, in the first segment, the Pittsburgh Penguins. And then the second segment, we'll look at the Toronto Maple Leafs. And then at uh, 21 in our rankings. And the final segment, we'll look at the New York Rangers. Before we get into any of that, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. If you're watching on YouTube, as usual, remember to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment letting us know what you want us to talk about next. And if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform, please leave us a rate and review and make sure to make us your first listen of the day. So let's get started right away here at 23 with the Pittsburgh Penguins who make a big jump forward from 30th in our last year's rankings to 23rd in this year's rankings, mainly due to two big trades that they made uh, throughout the uh, uh, throughout the 2024 uh, season. And let's start at the top end here with the big piece they added in exchange for Braden Yeager. Rutger McGordy is number one in our prospect pool uh, for the Pittsburgh Penguins here. Let's talk about McGordy for a second, how he's developed, what he's added to his game since, just a general description. Let's go through it. Absolutely. So Rutger McGrory is a a really intense and highly intelligent forward uh, who has played both at center and on the wing, uh, probably a winger in terms of NHL projection, but he's very versatile offensively, very intelligent, really good goal scorer, especially from within like 10, 15 feet of the net front. Uh, he gets to the dirty areas, uh, really quick release. He's a very good bumper player for power play, for instance. And I thought he was a great player to add into the equation here for the Pittsburgh penguins and i definitely think they got an upgrade in their prospect pool by sending out brayden yeager in that deal and uh i think that that mcgrordy is going to be a pretty effective nhler as of this season in a likely middle six type of capacity but he has the intelligence he has the uh intensity he has the defensive uh work rate at least i think the defensive understanding still has some growth to do but uh he's he's a player that can be used in just about every single situation and make himself useful so very adaptable player who whose skating isn't the best but has has found many ways of compensating for that and still make massive impact so i think that is pretty clear that he is the top prospect in this penguins pool Absolutely. And that brings us to number two in our prospect pool uh, for the Pittsburgh Penguins here. And it's Joel Blunkfist, a uh, 22 year old goaltender who was drafted in the 2020 NHL draft, a 52nd overall. Uh, and he's been looking fairly well. He's six foot two, uh, so a bit undersized in terms of goalie standards in the NHL. This past season, he played 45 games with Wilkes Barre Scranton in the um, in the AHL and uh, put up a 921 save percentage with a 2.16 goals against average. So really, really good numbers from him in the AHL. I think he could play an NHL game tomorrow. He's just, he's fairly ready for it. Um, He's got the things you look for for a smaller goalie. Technically sound, very, very good skater as well. Great footwork in the crease. Um, he's an aggressive goalie as well. He's not afraid to leave his crease in order to challenge uh, play, players forward. But he also have the he also has the footwork and explosiveness to um, get back quickly if a backdoor pass comes in, um, go post to post, all that good stuff. So really good goaltender overall. I really like his chances of playing NHL minutes as soon as next season. Um, very exciting goalie. Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins fans should be excited by what's coming down the pipeline um, there, at least in the crease. That brings us to number three with Owen Pickering, a prospect who was very raw in his draft year, um, grew a decent amount uh, between his draft minus two to his draft year. Um, I think it was 5'10 or 5'9 or 5'10 at 16. By the time he was 18 years old, 6'4, he's still 180 pounds, so still have some weight to add. Um, what really makes him special is the the awareness and the playmaking ability that he possesses. He's a very comfortable passer um, with really good vision, and you combine that with the frame, with the with the uh, with the wingspan that he has, with a stick, um, and he's really good at just moving laterally and opening up passing lanes for himself to to thread passes through. So, really, really interesting two way defenseman who still has to develop. The, the physical aspects of his game, he's still not comfortable in terms of footwork. You can still see that he's a bit lanky, but I feel like as Owen Pickering continues to add weight on his frame, you're just going to get a better and better and better player as he moves forward. 
But let's talk about another player who had an interesting progression throughout his draft year, and Harrison Brunick, who comes in at fourth overall here uh, in our Pittsburgh Penguins prospect pool breakdown. Talk me through his game and why we both, uh, well, I think I like him a bit more than you do, but uh, talk me through what you like about him. I'll, I'll give the profile. I'll, I'll actually let you talk about his game because you're a massive fan of this player. But Brunick is a six foot two right shot defenseman who played last season with the Kamloops Blazers in the WHL as a draft eligible, scoring 10 goals and 11 assists for 21 points through 49 games. Uh, the puck handling ability is really good with this player. He's a solid skater, good passer. But uh, beyond just the, the the raw tools, which are strong for Brunick. What makes him a prospect that, that that you were banging the table for all year long? It's the awareness. Um, and on top of that, Brunick isn't necessarily, he's got offensive skill, but he's not an offensive leaning player. He's a really, he's a two-way force. You know, he's really good at rush defending, really good at using his footwork to keep up with forwards as they barrel down on him and kind of using one leg stride to either direction to close the gap. Um, he uses he has a lot of small habits like using fake space, you know, kind of backing off a player, making them think that they have more space to work with than they do before closing that space incredibly quickly with his good skating. On top of that, he's just really, really aware. He's a very, very smart defender on both sides of the ice, whether it's activating offensively, um, whether it's kind of staying back and letting things happen. But like you said, it's really the stick handling that makes him quite unique, in my opinion. Um, players with this profile, with this frame, usually don't have the stick handling skill that he has. He has a lot of versatility in his stick handling. He can go forehand, backhand, backhand, forehand. He can toe drag around uh, forwards on his way into the offensive zone. So he's a very daring defenseman. Um, and he still needs to figure out kind of the reads and when to go and when not to go, but his awareness is really, really good when it comes to finding passing lanes. So I think that awareness is going to translate sooner than later to the, the stick handling and activation games. So I'm very confident in Brunick's game. I think it's going to be a great uh, two-way defenseman at the NHL level. Um, and lastly here, in terms of the uh, top five, we have Tanner Howe at uh, number five. It was also a selection that was added. Was it the pick right after, or was it two picks after uh, Harrison Brunick? Uh, I believe he was picked beforehand. He was uh, the, the first pick of the draft for... Um... Oh, no, you are correct. You are you are fully correct. Yes, you're right. Uh, Brunick was the 44th overall selection, and Tanner Howe was at 46th overall. So uh, the second pick for the Penguins in that 2024 draft is Tanner Howe, captain of the Regina Pats in the WHL, who scored 28 goals and 77 points in 68 games last season as the sole offensive producer on that team, uh, minus, uh, I mean, obviously they lost a, a certain little player called Connor Bedard, which impacted the quality of that lineup a little bit. But but uh, Tanner Howe is a really physical, really super intense. He, he's a definition of a spark plug forward. Uh, even though he's five foot ten, 182 pounds, he never stops working. He has a nonstop motor. Uh, and he's also quite an agile mover as well with the puck on his stick. I like the way that he gets to the net front. It's not just taking straight lines to the net front. He has some clever roots as well uh, that he's able to select. He's a decent passer. He's pretty good in building up play and incrementally and using his teammates uh, at as a unit rather than trying to do things on his own. He's a really like unselfish player to the core and, uh, and leaves everything out on the ice, like stylistic comp, maybe Brendan Gallagher ish, like along, along that route of a player uh, whose raw tools aren't the best in the world. Like he's not going to wow you with skating or, or playmaking or shooting ability, but he gets the dangerous areas incessantly. And, uh, and I think every player that has played with Tanner Howe has thoroughly enjoyed that that experience while playing against him is a, a bit less fun. Absolutely. I, I, I always say he's a, he's a playmaking Brendan Gallagher, um, but same, same style in terms of what they bring to the game for sure. Uh, but let's go move on to the uh, four honorable mentions we have three of which were added in the same trade for Jake Gensel. We have Vili Koivinen, Cruz Lucius and Vasily Ponomaryov, all who came back from Carolina in exchange for Jake Gensel there. And those are three decent prospects who add a lot of depth um, that Pittsburgh was sorely, sorely missing last year. Um, and with those three, I mean, for me, my favorite is Philly Koivinen. He's a two-way forward with a lot of uh, great skills as well. He's able to move up the ice. He's got good skating. He's capable of kind of breaking apart defenses with real good patience, real good vision. He opens up the ice east-west a lot, which is something I really look for from these two-way forwards because a lot of two-way forwards are just kind of north-south energy guys. But Koivinen has some east-west stability, which makes him really interesting. Cruz Lucius is a pure skill guy, in my opinion. He's got a decent motor, but really what makes him tick is um, his playmaking, handling, and shooting. Those are kind of the crux of his game. Needs to improve his skating a bit. Um, needs to work on his physicality as well. 
but overall, Lucius has some decent skills on that side. You have Tristan Bros, who's a bit of a uh, a jack of all trades. He's able to play physical. He's able to play a two way game. He's able to skate up the ice, carry the puck. You can do a bit of everything you ask from him. And Vasily Parnamaryov, in my opinion, is kind of the closest to the NHL of that batch. Um, I believe he's 22, uh, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and uh, he's been looking fairly good recently, right? He really has. Like, uh, as you mentioned, he is 22 years of age and uh, split last season uh, between three different AHL organizations, um, as well as getting two games with the Carolina Hurricanes, where he did put up a goal and assist uh, in, in that stretch. But uh, this this is another player that I think is going to add a lot to the depth for Pittsburgh. That's been a big issue with their prospect pool. It's not only been a lack of high-end skill in recent years, it's been a lack of depth. And uh, in this trade, they were able to get a, a couple players that I think are going to be the like very useful long-term NHLers, probably in bottom six or middle six capacities, but uh, who bring a lot of value. And Ponomariev is definitely one of those. Uh, his playmaking is a really standout trait in his toolkit. He's constantly getting the puck to the middle. Um, I, I like his, his one-touch ability as well uh, in, in his playmaking game. He's pretty pacey uh, in the passing areas in the offensive zone. I don't think that, that the tools are quite going to, to lift him up into a top six role long-term, but uh, that's not what what, what Pittsburgh needs of him here. Uh, they have a lot of other players that project similarly or better, yeah. as we've been talking about in this segment. And I think Panamariev just go is going to bring some more skill into that bottom six or middle six role uh, and, and is quite useful. But that, that wraps up our honorable mentions here in the first segment. And uh, in the second segment, we'll be right back with the Toronto Maple Leafs, who also have a very interesting prospect pool. But first, uh, a quick word from our sponsors over at Indeed. Here at Locked On NHL Process, we're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search. Match instead with Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform, uh, hiring and matching platform where uh, you can uh, connect with any candidate from pretty much anywhere. They have over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. You can dish your busy work and just use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging all in one place so you can connect with candidates faster and easier. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed develops the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, and according to a recent Indeed survey. Myself, personally, I got my day job through Indeed. And it was super easy, super straightforward, no secrets, nothing to, to search on your own. Everything was right there, really clear, clear, really easy. And that's what makes Indeed so interesting for, employee, for employees. So I can only imagine how much easier it is for employees employers to find candidates that that match exactly what they're looking for um so you can take the guesswork out of um out of uh, hiring and matching within indeed there you can get a 75 dollars sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash locked on just go to indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about indeed on this podcast again that's indeed.com slash locked on terms of conditions apply but if you need to hire you need indeed Alrighty, so let's move right on here to a second segment where we'll look at the Toronto Maple Leafs prospect pool. And it's a pretty interesting one. Um, I see their main strength is depth. Um, I, I don't think they have a marquee, you know, outside of Easton Cowan, I don't think they have anyone who projects as anything more than a second line forward. Um, but still, they've got some decent prospects to talk about here. So let's get right into it here with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And obviously we start at the top end here with Easton Cowan. Uh, Cowan almost made the NHL last year and has developed incredibly, incredibly well with the London Knights so far. He's become their key guy, um, their kind of centerpiece in their, in their uh, development moving forward. Um, 5'11", 165, 175 pounds. Um, his main traits are his awareness, his two-way game. Um, he's a physical player as well. He loves to forecheck hard, and he's a really, really good playmaker as well. He can find passing lanes, thread pass through uh, the smallest of seams. There's a lot to love on that side with Ethan Cowan. Um, but let's move right on to Ben Danford, who's a prospect we both kind of grew to like over the past year. Um, he ended up getting drafted at 32nd overall by the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I thought that was a pretty good pick. Uh, a lot of people had question marks. It raised a couple eyebrows, but he's a good player, right? 
he's a very solid player. I think that this is a guy who, in terms of long-term projection, is quite comfortable as a potential like number four guy long-term for the Leafs on that right side. But he's a really stabilizing presence, and that's one of the reasons that I think they went out and targeted this player. Uh, so even though they missed out on the EJ Emery's of the world uh, like with their first-round pick initially before they traded down, I still think that, that Ben Danford is a valuable piece for this core moving forward. Uh, he's a decent skater. He plays decently physically. He's smart at both ends of the ice. I think there's untapped offense as well with him. He only scored uh, 33 points in 64 games with Oshawa last year. And I think that there's definitely like room to grow that up to like 50 or 60 points in the OHL in the coming year or two uh, with him. But it's not the on-puck skill that is uh, like the crux of his game. It is the off-puck movement, the intelligence, uh, the overall habits. He's very polished and refined in his game at both ends of the ice. Uh, he's constantly making himself open as an option for teammates when they're under pressure. Uh, defensively, he keeps his gaps really tight and matches footwork off the rush really nicely. Uh, constantly tries to shepherd players towards the perimeter rather than allowing them to access the middle. And I think that uh, he's also a really good puck manager. He's solid on retrievals and uh, he values possession itself. So he fits into the Toronto system really, really nicely. But the next player here at number three for us is another really solid player. I think that that, that these these three players have set themselves apart from the rest of the of the core here uh, among the Leafs prospect group. But Fraser Minton also nearly cracked the NHL last season, getting into four games for Toronto to start off the year. So uh, how does he project in, in the next year or two for the Leafs? I still think with Fraser Minton, you've got a projection of a player who's going to be playing in probably a third line role. Um, I, I don't necessarily see anything standoutish in terms of offensive skill. He's got a great shot. I think that's kind of the crux of his game. Um, but he's just, for me, he's an average handler, an average passer. But what really makes him special is the awareness, the vision, the patience, the motor, um, kind of the more mental aspects of his game are really, really polished. And he loves to, he doesn't shy away from contact at all. He's a very physical player as well. Um, you know, he, he's got great off puck movement as well. Uh, he loves to reload above the puck and kind of let, let plays, keep plays in front of him in order to make the best decision for his team. So just overall, a really good mentally strong player. I think that's exactly what Toronto needs in their, in their kind of supporting roles. Theresa Minton brings a lot of, of, of interesting aspects of the game. So that's why he's our third prospect in the pool here. Um, we also have an interesting defenseman who's uh, is going to age out next year, Topi Niemela. Uh, he's still kind of developing, still hasn't found his footing in the NHL, played the entire season in the AHL last year, 68 games, 39 points um, as a six foot, 180 pound right shot D. What really makes Niemela interesting is a combination of skating with hockey sense. He's a very, very smart defenseman uh, on both sides of the ice. Um, really kind of cemented himself as the Marley's number two defenseman last year. And um, he's got a great reach, a great range of influence on the ice. Um, he's a really active uh, activator as well. He loves to push up the ice and get active um, in transition, join the rush as a fourth forward, that kind of stuff. Um, he, you know, he needs to work on a couple things. I think his puck management is still a kind of work in progress, but uh, and retrievals as well. But overall, I think that Mimula has some really interesting tools and could develop into a really for the Leafs. Uh, and finally, we have a goalie. Uh, Dennis Hildeby has been developing really, really well. Was drafted as an overager uh, in the 2022 NHL draft. He's currently 22 years old, but up a 913 save percentage in 41 games for the Toronto Marlies and has been developing fairly good on that side. Um, he's still kind of a, a, a work in progress. I think that he's, he's worked uh, his way up, but as a six foot seven goalie putting up good numbers in the AHL at 22, it's a pretty good sign of what's coming. I think the Leafs might have a starter here. And I think the main issue with the Leafs is for the longest time, finding a, a stable starter for them has been an issue. Um, I don't think Hildeby's good enough to be kind of a long-term, you know, 15 season starter in the NHL, but uh, at least he'll give him some, some good results for maybe five or six seasons, something like that. I wouldn't be surprised at all, but let's finish off with the honorable mentions here. We've got a bunch to go through. Let's go through the names real quickly. We'll start off with Archer Akhtyamov, who's another goaltender in the system there who's been printing up good numbers in the KHL, right? Yeah, absolutely he has. Uh, I mean, he, he put up last year in, in 17 KHL games a 921 save percentage for AK Bars Kazan. He also played 19 games in the VHL where he put up a 927. And uh, he's six foot two, 170 pounds. And I'm, I'm not the biggest of goaltenders out there, but uh, he's a really interesting goaltender uh, in his development. And I think that uh, I mean, I'll be very curious to see how he plays in the AHL, especially if there's perhaps a dual tandem between him and Dennis Hildeby. Hill 
uh, this season or next year. But uh, overall, a goaltender who uh, moves around his crease really well. Uh, he tracks the, the puck uh, really well as well. But he's very aggressive. So he he, he lets yeah. he lets out some big rebounds and stuff with like just wide open cages. So there's an element of risk in his game, but also an element of entertainment value, I guess, uh, from the goaltending position. And especially for a slightly undersized goaltender at six foot two, uh, it's nice to see them. Uh, uh, nice to see him uh, taking those risks and trying to cement himself as a a really really like anticipatory and aggressive goaltender. Because oftentimes when you are undersized, you can't just sit back in your crease if you're not that six foot seven frame of Dennis Hill to be. Uh, if you yep. just sit back, you're gonna let goals in and uh, and taking preventive me measures like that, like uh, Achyanov, Achyanov has last season, uh, is really interesting. So they have some interesting goaltenders in their pool and obviously some other players as well. Uh, Noah Chadwick is a big intelligent defenseman that they drafted recently. Nikita uh, Grebyonkin is another, another interesting player. We both also really like both uh, Nick Moldenhauer and Ryan Fairberg in the last couple of seasons, and they've been developing quite well in their own rights. But that wraps up uh, the Toronto uh, Maple Leafs prospect pool. We really like Easton Cowan, especially. He's one of my favorites, so uh, definitely bump Toronto up the ranking a little bit here. But uh, overall, a solid pool, but uh, a bit of a limitation in in uh, NHL projectable depth and uh, and high end upside. But that wraps up this for uh, the second segment for us here, and we'll be right back in the third with the New York Rangers. But first, a quick word from our sponsors over at Game Time. If you're looking to buy cheap tickets last minute to any event, Game Time is the best place to get them. Uh, Game Time is safe, secure, and really, really easy to use. They're my personal favorite uh, ticketing app, mainly because my schedule changes around a lot. So oftentimes when I'm going to games, I'm going last minute because I don't know I'm free until the last minute. Uh, and Game Time is made exactly for that. They have tickets up until the last minute before an event starts, and even sometimes an hour after it starts, you can still get tickets over at Game Time. Like I said, my schedule changes out around a lot, so really, really useful app if you're like me. Um, and they're just obsessed with saving you money. They've got flash deals, zone deals, last minute deals, and the Game Time guarantee to make sure you get the best price as well. And they have all-in pricing, which you can toggle in the app in order to see the final price after fees, after taxes on your tickets, so you know exactly what you're buying, you know exactly what you're paying, and you can make the best decision for your wallet. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, super simple. Just create an account and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. So but download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Alrighty, so moving on and finally closing off here with our third segment, we'll look at the New York Rangers at 21st in our prospect pool rankings. We'll look at their top five players and a couple honorable mentions. Let's start at the very top here, with the prospect who I was skeptical about, but he, he's proven me wrong so far. Gabe Perot is the number one prospect in the New York Rangers prospect pool. Let's talk about his game for a second. Yeah, the 5'11", 163-pound high IQ playmaker has, uh, well, played very well since being drafted. Last season uh, with Boston College, he played all 36 games in the NCAA, scoring 19 goals and 60 points. That is 1.67 points per game uh, at the World Junior Championship. He also scored three goals and 10 points through seven games for Team USA. And overall has just been a real glue guy for that line that he was playing with for two consecutive years with will smith and ryan leonard obviously will smith has now graduated to the nhl so that line is being broken up this coming season but um his playmaking ability his intelligence his off puck movement mm -hmm. were really core to that line seeing the success that it has uh he's incredibly intelligent high end anticipation Find soft ice incredibly well. Uh, fantastic puck handler, even better playmaker, underrated goal scorer as well, uh, mainly going down to where he finds himself on the ice rather than, than pure shooting mechanics. The physicality and the skating remain subpar, and this remains part of the question around his overall projection, which was the big thing in his draft year as well, is just how far will the intelligence, the puck handling, the playmaking take this player because the skating is not great, and he is 
quite small, like 5'11", sure, but he's been clocking in under 160 pounds for quite a while and just crossed that barrier in the last half year now. So a highly skilled player, but there are still some question marks with the overall projection. But at this stage, I think that it's, it's pretty easy to say that, that Gabe Perot has a high likelihood of being a long-term top six piece for the New York Rangers. And I think that he will fit in really, really nicely with the system that they've been developing in recent seasons. Absolutely. That brings us to number two in the prospect pool rankings. EJ Emery clocks in at second here. And Emery is a rush defender through and through. He is so good at suppressing um, offense uh, in transition, really good at shepherding opponents to the, uh, to the, to the sides there. He's a fantastic skater and a really good physical player as well. And that combination is really good. He's got a lot of endurance. Um, you can, you can push through 25, 30 minutes a game without a problem. Did it quite frequently for the NTDP. Um, and overall, just, you know, at 6'3", 185 pounds with the length that he has, the range that he has, with the skating that he has, he's just incredibly, incredibly good at suppressing um, defense, uh, uh, suppressing offense. The main issue with uh, Emery, though, is the lack of offense. Um, he doesn't have really much in terms of handling skill, in terms of passing, in terms of shooting. That really makes him a standout player. But what he's really good at is once he suppresses play, he doesn't leave it there. He chases the puck, um, you know, kind of recovers the puck, the loose puck, and then moves it to a player uh, that's open on his team with a three to six foot pass. That's really kind of the limitation of his offensive game, but it works really well with what he does well. You know, as a rush defender, there's I've seen a lot of rush defenders who just... They suppress, they suppress the play and then don't know how to recover the puck after that. Emery's really good at that, and that's what made him a, a first-round pick there at 30th overall in the 2024 NHL draft for the New York Rangers. Um, let's move on to number three here, and Brendan Othman, a goal-scoring forward with a lot of skill. He's got a fantastic shot. He's an, he's an above-average passer as well. Really, really smart. Great off-puck movement. Great uh, ability to find space in the offensive zone. He has some physical skill as well. At six foot, 175 pounds, his ability to win battles along the boards is quite surprising. It'll, it'll take it, it's taken a lot of defensemen by surprise um, in the uh, in the AHL. He put up 49 points in 67 games and got into three NHL games as well. Um, and at 21 years old, there's still some runway. He can still continue to develop. I think he's going to be an NHLer next year. Uh, I'd be very very surprised if he's not. Um, and the only reason he's at third and not at second is just because Emery's just so money. He's just very very reliable and useful for his team. Um, I think Offman isn't necessarily an intelligent defensive player. He's very much a, a pure offensive player, but the things that he brings, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he finds a spot in uh, in the Rangers roster. Um, let's move on to number four here. Brett Berard is an interesting prospect. Um, he was drafted quite late. He was drafted 134th overall in the 2020 NHL draft, but his progression has been really interesting, right? Absolutely. He just played his first season in the AHL with the Hartford Wolfpack and through 71 games, he scored 25 goals and 48 points, which was a really good effort. And this is also a player who is five foot nine and uh, does not have a separation gear in his skating. His skating is probably yeah. around average, but for his size, like among players of his size, it's probably subpar skating of players that have actually made the NHL. And he thrives in traffic. He thrives. Uh, he's very middle driven. He's constantly getting to the dangerous area the dirty areas and uh while the shot itself isn't the biggest threat in the world he is a real goal scorer because he gets into goal scoring positions and has a lot of composure as well under pressure when he is in those spots uh i've, I've really liked uh, his overall hockey sense the puck handling is good uh, he's really improved his playmaking and passing ability uh since uh, especially in college uh since his draft year and uh he's a player that really is able to connect play between his teammates while also doing a lot of the dirty work that i that gives a lot of time and space to more skilled, like outright skilled players, which I think gives him some level of second line upside at the NHL level. But more than likely, we're talking about a guy that projects as a third liner, maybe a fourth liner at the NHL level, but a player that will get the respect of all of his teammates very quickly and uh, do a lot of things on the ice that makes their lives easier and gets them to concentrate on producing offense specifically. So a play yeah. that I like a lot and uh, has some similarities as well with uh, the next guy here, Adam Shakora, a uh, five foot 10, really intense two-way winger. Talk me through his game a little bit. 
Yeah, absolutely. I don't think he has much in terms of standout skill, but man, is he reliable. He's very, very smart defensively, high-end motor, high-end defensive awareness, um, really responsible, great skater, great physical player as well, despite his size. He captained Slovakia at the U at the U20 uh, World Junior Championship, played really, really well in that tournament, despite the fact that he only put up two points in five games. But Shakur, Shakur is not going to be a player who puts up a lot of points. He's going to be a player you put out with a minute left in the game. You need to win a face-off. You, well, you need to, to battle for a position in the defensive zone because the opponent has their, has their net empty, that kind of stuff. He's that kind of player. He's a player you're going to rely on in key situations defensively, penalty kill, all that good stuff. I think he's got a clear pathway to the NHL. He's got the skills defensively in order to get it done. It's just like I said, I wouldn't expect production above maybe 35 points a season. That's probably the most he'll get out of Sakura at his very, very best. Um, if he proves me wrong, great. It's just that, you know, given the skill set, given what he does, given what I've seen so far, that's a projection I see from him as kind of a third line winger, defensive specialist, top penalty kill player. Uh, let's close mm. things off here for New York with uh, four honorable mentions. First and foremost, Matt Rempe. Uh, yeah. The, the absolute physical monster uh, that Six has. Six foot eight. Uh, 240 yeah. pounds that's just not fair you can't fight that that's just the, he has arms the, the length of my body that's just not fair uh but yeah overall very very interesting player and it's a player who surprisingly has some some inklings of skill but that's very much been yeah. leaning into his uh his, his physical side in the nhl for sure um you also have bryce mcconnell barker who i don't, I don't think both of us are either either one of us is really kind of eager on but he's still a prospect yeah. right he is a prospect. He has a decently large frame, uh, a pretty good shot, but really subpar skating ability and uh, very much relies on trying to stay ahead of play and trying to outthink opponents. And I don't think that he processes the game quite fast enough to make that work at the NHL level, but has some intriguing tools and has been developing in the OHL. So we'll see how, how that, like where that takes him in the coming seasons. Uh, but, but not a player that I think has, overwhelmingly likely odds of hitting the NHL. But there's two other players I want to give shout outs to here among the New York Rangers crop of prospects. And that would be Drew Fortescue, uh, a solid defensive defenseman who was playing in Boston last year in the NCAA, uh, playing some really good hockey in depth minutes, uh, got quite a few penalty minutes uh, on that stretch too. And uh, last but not least, uh, just recently drafted Raoul Boilard from the QMJHL, uh, a really solid two-way center, uh, that we liked a lot more earlier on the draft cycle compared to later. I think that as the as the year went on and we got increasingly like 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 uh, we got more and more viewings, uh, especially like his teammate was standing out significantly more for uh, uh, I, I mean if you score over a goal a game that happens uh but yeah. but voila uh but but voila was was very much fading into the background struggling to make an impact uh and even those tighter games where you want your two-way forwards to take the big step but overall i think new york has a solid prospect pool here especially considering that they have been perennial contenders throughout building this pool so uh putting it together uh in just like three years with the guys that are in this list here uh is quite impressive so uh, overall i think that 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 they are the the worthy team of the three that we cover today uh, to, to to take the number one slot. Absolutely. And that wraps things up for today's episode. Thank you very much for tuning in. As usual, remember to like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform, please make us your uh, first listen of the day and make sure to leave us a rate and review. Um, for your second listen of the day, make sure to check out Locked On Sports Today. They've got all your news and updates about what's going on around sports. And make sure to tune in for our future episodes as we continue throughout the month of September our prospect poll rankings. This has been Hattie Kalakash with Sebastian High, and we hope you tune in next time.